And I don't touch the thing anyway until that. But other than that, I don't touch it. I don't spit much. <laughs> and it's my own spit. <laughs> Welcome to the doldrums. That's my personal name for this time of year after the holy days are over and the rest of the year is dedicated to whatever it's dedicated to. I call this time of year the doldrums. That part of the year where the the holy days of Yahweh are done. This is my time to look at other things in the Bible that we haven't looked at in that thorough way that you usually do. Something else to get rid of. <laughs> Things that we can look through through fresh eyes. Some things I don't think we know everything about. A lot of things. And I look at stuff with fresh eyes every year because every year I update or focus a little differently the stuff that happened before. You look on our YouTube channel and there's hundreds of videos out there. But every once in a while, I'll replace one with some updates. I do it quietly because most of the stuff doesn't look doesn't get looked at much anyway from the numbers and every once in a while I find something that we don't believe that way anymore but we'll replace it with one that's a little bit more updated and a little bit more reflective of the Bible and I'm admitting that some of the stuff that is out there was a little off not much, but not much to most people didn't expect it to be there anyway because they didn't recognize it when they saw it. But I will change things if I see something that is not right. That's why every once in a while I will redo these. I'm going to redo this one today. I find myself thinking about the plan of Yahweh and the kind of detail that can shake you up if you think about it that way too long. And that's really, in a way, why we're here. Shake us up enough to take it back into the world with you and shake up somebody along with you. A couple of somebody is if you got that many around you that you listen to you. And some of us don't have that. And that's a, another problem altogether, but the Father will take care of that in his time. And looking at the scriptures in this deeper way, though, it becomes clear that we have a long way to go to fully comprehend the totality of what Yahweh has in mind. And when we finally get to that point, it'll probably blow our minds as well. Elohim intends to return the world to its original state. 
in the long run, he intends to return the universe to its original state. If you think all those planets out there are going to be void of a living experience and void of teeming life, think again. Not seeing the entire plan at first, we thought he intended to destroy it. But he gives us a few subtle hints as to what he intends to do. But because we have been so intently focused on ourselves, we have forgotten how to look at these things through his eyes. We have gotten bogged down with the cares of this world and forgotten how much information is in this book and have forgotten that there is an ultimate goal to Yahweh's plan. The whole world claims to be serving little g o d, but most think that they go into the water, come up, and go home, and that's it. One day a week to worship, and that's it. And some even do it on the Sabbath. Some called the Sabbath Sunday. That's a mistake, but time will come when that will be corrected. Some, when they hear things from this book, they hear these things and they decide that they can't do that. I wouldn't worry too much about that, though. If we don't do our part, it will be done one way or the other. It always has. Drop anchor at Luke, the 19th chapter, the 33rd verse. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? That's theft. They said, the Messiah needs it. They brought it to Yeshua, threw their cloaks around the cold, and put Yeshua on it. And he went along. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. This is an event happening here, one that is spoken of other, other places. 37, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise Yahweh in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king and who comes in the name of the Messiah? Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Yeshua, teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, these stones will cry out. It's coming. 
whether we help or not. It's coming. Don't worry about it. And Satan's end is coming as well. And won't that be a time? The more I read this book, the more I learn, and the more I learn, the more I learn. The more I learn, though, I become convinced of the veracity of what is here. And some of it is so profound that it's simply mind-boggling. As we watch the world go on and people become more and more sinful, wouldn't it be wonderful to wake up one morning and find that there is no more sin? <laughs> Title, The End of Sin. The End of Sin. Let that one roll around in your mind for a few minutes. No false religion, despite the bleeding of that beetle. What's his name, John Lennon? Imagine no heaven if you try. Yeah, we tried that a long time. It get us, got us to this point. No false religion, no idolatry, no cursing or cussing, as some say. No Sabbath breaking, no disobedient children or adults, <laughs> no murder. Well, Turn your TVs in then. That's all you see on TV. No adultery. Well, there goes your Netflix. <laughs> no theft. Price is going to finally start to bottom out at the stores, huh? No lying. <laughs> I was half joking, y'all. No coveting other Pope so folks stuff what a great way to live we'll find out about that one day in reality though some pretend to live that way now but it's a pity that we can't find it within ourselves to do so right now but we can't because of these bodies that are, we are saddled with we can do it for a while but it is not possible to do it endlessly we can't some think they can but I can hear a roaring lion smacking his lips Amos, the third chapter, the fourth verse. Does a lion roar in the thicket when he has no prey? Does he growl in his den when he has caught nothing? Satan is the problem. He has been since the beginning. He started out 
rebelling against Yahweh. In all of this, turning one third or more of the angels against him. Fooling Eve with a lie and so much more. Satan's intent has been to thwart the plan of Yahweh ever since he found out he wouldn't be in charge of it anymore. And he has intervened personally to destroy anyone, anything, everyone Yahweh has chosen to advance this plan of his to the next level. I won't start in Genesis 3 with the deception of in the garden as we already know all about that. But read it again when you get a chance. There's always something you didn't know. We're concerned with Satan's later intrigues though. Every time Yahweh's prophets came on the scene, Satan was right there trying to destroy them. Exodus, the first chapter, the 22nd verse. Then Pharaoh gave the order to all of his people. Every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile. But let every girl live. We said last week why they do, do, do that. But later in Exodus, the second chapter, the fourth verse, we see that Moses, a Levite, is allowed to escape right into Pharaoh's own home. And eventually, led the Israelites out of Egypt. Then he codified the old covenant with them, the Decalogue, which they agreed to comply with, then rebelled against it and broke it repeatedly, sacrificing herds and flocks to atone for their abundant sins. But it didn't end there. We like to think that Satan knows about prophecy, but we think that Satan is up on the plans of Yahweh. But I'm beginning to wonder about that too. Hosea, the 11th chapter, the first verse. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. Matthew, the second chapter, the first verse. Matthew, the second chapter, the first verse. After Yeshua was, was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. And asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to him to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. Verse 5, in Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet 
has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Verse 7. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for this child. As soon as you find him, report back to me so that I may go and worship him. Yeah, right. Verse 9. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. <laughs> when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own own country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and, and fled and left Egypt. Verse 15, where he said unto, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled with Yahweh. what Yahweh had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. When Messiah was born on earth, he was expected. But he was expected as a king of the Lion of Judah, not as a priest, as the priests came from the line of Levi. This was one of Messiah's main contentions with the Pharisees, and they with him. They thought he came to usurp their authority. He knew some of them voted themselves into the priesthood, although they weren't Levites and therefore had diminished their authority with Yahweh. But that gets into the Levitical priesthood and the Melchizedek priesthood and all of that and gets into, in a lot of ways, Elohim's reasons to dump them if they didn't repent of their dastardly deeds. This isn't done often, but the Pharisees are an interesting subject in themselves and one worthy of some thought. I read this last night for the first time in a long time and it opened up some things that a lot of people to this day still want to argue about, but the argument is over. The Pharisees were an influential 
religious sect within Judaism. In the time of Yeshua and the early church, they were known for their emphasis on personal piety. The word Pharisee comes from a Hebrew word meaning Pharisaeus, which means appropriately separated. But they called themselves the Habarim, meaning the associated. Their acceptance of oral traditions in addition to addition to the written law and their teaching that all Jews should observe all 600 plus laws of the Torah. The Torah? Talmud. Should be here. This was in the book I read. The Torah. <laughs> That's why people are so confused. Even the books that supposed to teach this stuff, the books are wrong. It says here, Torah. Including the rituals concerning ceremonial purification. The Pharisees were mostly, notice this, middle class businessmen and leaders of the synagogues. Though they were a minority in the Sanhedrin and held a minority position, a number of positions as priests, they seemed to control the decision making of the Sanhedrin because they had popular support among the people. Who doesn't support the middle class? <laughs> among the Pharisees, there were two schools of thought based on the teachings of two rabbis. Shammai and Hillel. Shammai called for a strict, unbending interpretation of the law on almost every issue. But Hillel taught a looser, more liberal application. Followers of Shammai fostered a hatred for anything Roman, including taxation. Jews who, were, who served as tax collectors were persona non grata among the Pharisees. look through the Bible any time that the Pharisees saw a tax collector they went after him and nobody hang out, hung out with the tax collectors among the people anyway among the people the Shemaiites wanted to outlaw all communication and commerce between Jews and Gentiles the Hillelites took a more gracious approach and opposed such extreme exclusiveness. I forgot the scripture I was going to go after here showing what Yeshua thought. His thoughts were, this is a house for all people. You have made it a 
den of thieves. I'll find that later. Or you will. For me. Eventually, the two schools within Phariseeism grew so hostile to each other that they refused to worship together. Sound familiar? <laughs> Satan knew a change was coming, but he didn't seem to know exactly where it came from, would come from. So as in Egypt, he tried killing all of the males again, hoping to get the one that he wanted. Failed again. When Messiah began his ministry, Satan again attempted to tempt the Messiah into worshiping him. When that didn't work, he personally intervened using Judas to betray Messiah and ultimately having him crucified. This was the worst thing he could have done, for his own interest anyway. His replacement was now at the right hand of the Father. And he had to know he would now turn his attention to a new plan of attack against him. <laughs> but Satan also had a new plan of attack. <clears throat> trying to eliminate the prophets of the future, or he could try to eliminate all the descendants of the 12 tribes. And believe me, he has tried both. Matthew, the second chapter, the 16th verse. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. And he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through, through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice in, is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. The Bible's way of saying that they're dead. They are no more. There's some other things attached to that too, but I won't have time today to explain that. I will in upcoming more inclusive sermons. But is this a mistake? Rachel had two children, Joseph and Benjamin. She was not the mother of Judah. So why was Rachel mentioned and not Leah? The mother of the Jews. Because here it was happening again, just as it happened before in Jebus before. We don't have time to go through Judges 19 and 20, but to break it down, the combined tribes of Israel nearly wiped out the one tribe of Benjamin, except for 600 men who fled the battle. After the score was settled for the rape and murder, the assembly decided to give 400 virgins from Gilead and 200 from Shiloh as wives to the 
600 remaining Benjamites. This totally blended the tribes and rendered only Yahweh able to determine who is from what tribe today. But we try, don't we? <laughs> and Satan tries. We get our egos all puffed up and claiming to be from this lost tribe or that lost tribe and even try to say which one. But what Yahweh disperses, you won't find it. We waste our time playing that game. You know the one. I'm the real Israelite. I'm the real Israelite. It's a game. Everybody plays it. Some form of it. Let's look at something Satan tried to kill Moses at birth also tried to kill Messiah at birth. He failed on both tries because he doesn't understand the prophecies fully. We understood it a long time that he did. He doesn't. Yahweh only told his prophets and those who have his spirit what he was doing. Amos, the third chapter, the seventh verse. Amos, the third chapter, the seventh verse. Surely the sovereign Yahweh does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. Unless you're a prophet, you would do well to wait for Yahweh to make that decision. Or you will find yourself a spiritual accomplice to the murders that Satan has already committed, thinking that he has found them. Messiah lit into the Pharisees for this and accused them in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, the 35th verse. Matthew, the 23rd chapter, the 35th verse. And so upon you will come all the religious righteous blood that has been shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. 36, I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. And through Titus, it did come in 70 AD when the temple was destroyed and Jerusalem was sacked. But it will happen again. Revelation, the 18th chapter, the 21st verse. Revelation, the 18th chapter, the 21st verse. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, with such violence, the great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. This is in time now. 22, the music of harpists and musicians, flute players and trumpeters will never be heard again. No workman of any trade will be ever found in her again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in here 
again. 23, the light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's great men. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of the saints and of all who have been killed on the earth. In the Old Testament under the Levitical priesthood, only his prophets had his Holy Spirit and were privy to prophecy. But under the Melchizedek priesthood, we all will be priests and kings until the very end. This is the importance of the Passover ceremony in the New Testament. And people are still doing it the Old Testament way. Not acknowledging the importance that Yeshua puts on the New Testament version because we are all will be priests and kings until the end under this New Testament form. We will be around the world and will focus our efforts, efforts as will the two witnesses in Jerusalem to carry the prophecy from Jerusalem to the beast in the final days. Revelation, the 10th chapter, the seventh verse. Revelation, the 10th chapter, the seventh verse. But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of Yahweh will be accomplished, just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. All of you who know preachers that call themselves a prophet and don't know this, sorry, y'all. Give it. Give up those titles. Mm -hmm. You don't. Yeah, they won't. They won't. But they won't be true prophets either. That other one, apostles. Raiden got himself knee deep in it again. Anybody that doesn't know these things isn't a prophet or an apostle. I don't claim to be. Yet. Nobody has told me yet. I'm just figuring out what I can from the book. Revelation, the 11th chapter, the third verse. Revelation, the 11th chapter, the third verse. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. The beast power more or less. But this is what Satan has wanted to stop. He has killed before and will kill again. Satan attempted in the modern age to stop these two witnesses from being born via Hitler's final solution in World War II. Even Hasatan doesn't know the difference between Rachel's children and Leah's. We don't either. Wait and see in the end of days. World War II was the, one of the bloodiest wars of all times. And with its genesis in a 
attempted genocide of all the Jews in Europe. Then it spread to North Africa. What is in North Africa? <laughs> Libya? Morocco? Algeria? He has, throughout time, been behind genocidal attacks against people all over the globe. Jews in Europe. Many Limba tribesmen were killed either in the attacks of West African tribes against other tribes, in the slave trade. Many died in the holds of ships coming here as slaves. Nearly eight million by the Encyclopedia Britannica's count. These people claim a legacy going back to the tribe of Benjamin and have the DNA to prove it. But they don't know where they're there, Rachel's or Leah's. Yet, some made it here and have descendants in America. Why would this happen? Only Yahweh knows. But he has confused the issue of paternity and will only reveal it when he is good and ready. Those folks on the street corners beating people in New York, they're going to pay for that. That's not the way to prove that you're Israel. Anyone had their genealogy mapped on television lately? Anybody? had one of those kits come to your house? How accurate was it? You don't know, do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my point. I won't say it's not real, but their method, methods are as suspect as anything else come out, out of the CDC these days. When they tell you how the coronavirus went rogue after being stable for 50 years or so, <laughs> I would suspect anything that saying came out of the CDC these days. But I digress, but only slightly. But we do know one thing. There will be eventually be a judgment for those of us who have Yahweh's spirit through the blood of his son, Yeshua Messiah. It has begun now, knowing this, what kind of people should we be? First Peter, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse. For it is the time for judgment to begin with the family of Yahweh. And if it begins with us, what will be, out, be the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of Yahweh? And if it's hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Good question. And the answers 
are very interesting for all involved. 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, the 13th verse. Almost done. 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, the 13th verse. In the sight of Yahweh, who gives life to everything, and of Messiah Yeshua, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearance of our master, Yeshua Messiah, which Yahweh will bring about in his own time. Yahweh, the blessed and only ruler, the king of kings, and Lord of Lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. Here a little, there a little. That's where you get it out of here. Romans, the sixth chapter, the 23rd verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life in Messiah Yeshua, our master. Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, the 14th verse. Fourth verse. Caught me on typo there. Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, the fourth verse. For every living soul belongs to me. The Father as well as the Son, both alike belong to me. The soul who sins is the one who will die. And for a final scripture, an end, an answer to the end to sin, and a suggestion for living the rest of our lives. First John, the third chapter, The eighth verse. He who does what is sinful is of the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the son of Yahweh appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of Yahweh will continue to sin because Yahweh's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of Yahweh. So many people do things and having not read this, they show themselves as what they are because they didn't read this before they did it. Verse 10, this is how we know who the children of Yahweh are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of Yahweh nor is anyone who does not love his brother. And the Bible in other verses said we all are of the same blood. That means we're all brothers and sisters. 
This is the message, 11. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do, do not like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the, if the world hurt, hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Keep on down that line far enough, you'll eventually get there. This is how we know what love is. Yeshua Messiah laid down his life for us. And we all ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of Yahweh be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in deeds, in truth. 19. This This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for Yahweh is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before Yahweh and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. Let us please Yahweh. Let us pray daily to leave all of our faults behind. Pray that they be purged from us. I just feel in my heart that something is coming. I can't prove what it is. And it is nothing in particular, but something is out here in the wind. Everything around us this weather up and down one day, one, last week was 70 degrees, this week nights 8, I mean 30. Don't hear much about global warming anymore, do we? Mm -hmm. There is a term for it, but everybody escapes it. Destabilization. And another thing that the world doesn't think about that I do all the time, the warming is a, the end time, what's going to happen? It's going to be warmer. The preparation is for that. What was the average temperature all over the world back in the canopy days? 75 to 80 degrees all around the world. He's not going to just ease the world back into that because it's not stable right now. Some parts of the world are freezing and others are boiling. 
the average temperature is about 80. That's going to be the average in the end times. How we would get there all at once without something breaking along the way. I can't prove it again. It is nothing in particular that points that out to me, but it just seems that the world is getting worse and no one else sees it as a bad thing. Everybody is positioning themselves to profit from it on some level. Even these diseases, the profit margin is there all over. These masks are getting more expensive all the time. There's a reason for that. Let us pray that we be found worthy to pass the judgment that I know is on all of Yahweh's people. Let us all live to see our title today, The End of Sin. Any questions? Any comments? Any comments? <laughs> That's all I've got. Dwayne. I have noticed over the years that the language that's used in public has deteriorated markedly. Mm. Yep. Dropping F bombs on television now. Yeah. Yep. No, you don't use that kind of language in public. That's right. Or any person. Personally. <laughs> I'm finding I'm getting used to it. And that's I'm, the idea. That's the idea. I'd rather be appalled at it. Yeah. <laughs> I was the guy that used that stuff all the time in a time in my life where I won't go back to that. But now I'm attempting to purge myself of that, but everybody else is not. The expression, oh my God. Mm -hmm. popped up on television some years ago mm -hmm. as a trial. Mm -hmm. And when they found they could get away with it, they just progressed with it. Now it's everybody using it for everything. Mm -hmm. When they see it around me, I jump up and say, where? Can I meet him? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's, that's a, that's one of those things. OMG is the, yeah. Same thing. That's the same thing. But there's no respect for God in the public discourse at all right now. None. None at all. I'd like to tell him you better have something good to say when you see him. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't know how he works. Anything that you still have on your docket, mm -hmm. he piles them up mm -hmm. and waits for you. Mm -hmm. And you got a thousand OMGs up there. Mm -hmm. And you got to have something for each one of them. Mm -hmm. If you're not, do what you say it for. Right. That's, that's using his name in vain. Every one of those as a thing for it. <laughs> All that piling up. And those people don't know anything about this piling up stuff. They have learned in their churches that 
once you say that that's those words and magically that whole thing disappears mm -mm. that doesn't disappear it appear, di disappears from your conscious thoughts about it but you get there he's gonna be a li little bit more glamorous place than this that stuff is gonna be there who is it your name will come up and got some stuff for you here mm -hmm. and then reach up and OMG who are you talking about not me I have a name what's my name that's a whole other subject. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard about the brother this one. Yes, I did. Big prayer because they say he's in really bad shape.